the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is alive forever lifted high Your name cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus darkness tremble Jesus Jesus silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God
child of God. Like we're walking this way, then switch. Switch. So we walk different directions. Sorry, Sala. Okay, let's take a chair out. That was really scary.
<laughs> hey Spark Youth, for Spark Spotlight this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be focusing on one of our missions workers, Melissa McLeod. Some of you may know Mel. She's a missionary with YWAM, which stands for Youth with a Mission. And we're going to watch a couple of short videos from her talking about how she got involved with YWAM, some of the training that she's done, where she's living now, and some of the adventures that she's been on since becoming a YWAM missionary. We had the lovely opportunity to adopt Mel as our Spark Youth Missionary, which means that we can be specifically praying for her, we can support her financially, and we can also be writing to her to encourage her in what she's been doing. So get comfortable, get ready, and have a look at these two videos from Mel. Hi everyone, my name is Mel and I've been with Narrabone Baptist Church for almost 13 years now. A few years ago I felt God call me to do a discipleship training school with YWAM, um, Youth with a Mission, in Las Vegas. I felt that God has called me back there to full-time staff the base. Um, the YWAM base is located in the 11th worst neighbourhood in the whole of the states due to its crime rates, um, the prostitution rates and domestic violence. And so one of the ministries we do is a neighbourhood prayer walk and one time we we're out walking and we met this man who had a sling over his arm and so we asked if we could pray for him and he said that two days before that he'd been shot and so we got to share the gospel with him and tell him how much he was loved. Um, he gave us a huge hug and it was so cool because um, predominantly there's African Americans living in the neighborhood and he comes from a gang and so we were these like young white girls coming up and sharing the love of Jesus and he was so touched that we would go out of our way to actually care about him and to pray for him. A lot of what the base does is build relationships with the community. Uh, we take a lot of teams in where we train them up in discipleship and evangelism and we go out and bring the gospel to the streets of Vegas. So we will often do worship on the strip or we'll go and share testimonies over the microphone at block parties and stuff like that. So the ministry I'll be working with is Mission Adventures where we'll be bringing in teams from all over the states, train them up, uh, mostly young people, and take them out to the streets and to do evangelism and reach the homeless and hopefully an anti-trafficking ministry where we get to take care packages out to the girls in the streets and yeah, just love on them and bring the gospel to them. And so ways that you can be praying for me, um, we really need male staff at the base and just pray for unity within the staff team. Um, also for financial support for myself as I'll be needing monthly support to be able to live over there. I'll be living in a ministry house with a couple of girls um, and just that, yeah, that I'll have strength and just find time to rest. Thank you so much for partnering with me. Hello, my name is Mel. For those of you that don't know me, I am a missionary in Las Vegas working with YWAM, um, which is short for Youth of the Mission. And they are a global organization that seeks to know God and make God known. So I have the privilege of um, running with a bunch of students that come through the base to do discipleship training schools, we have weekly outreaches and this past nine weeks, I was part of the leadership for an internship, which is partnered with Grace City Church in Las Vegas. Um, so we had nine intern girls come and we just brought Jesus to the streets of Las Vegas and it was wild. Las Vegas is not like any other place that you'll go to in the whole world. Um, it is very unique in the sense that it is literally run on sex and money. People come here to gamble and people come here to go to the strip clubs and to, to go to the brothels outside the city. Um, so it's a very, very dark place spiritually. Um, we are third in the nation for homelessness. We're um, like ninth in the nation for human trafficking. Uh, suicide rates are crazy here. It's just a very dark place and people come here to fill all sorts of voids in their heart. And so I felt called to come here um, to show people that there is a hope and that Jesus is the only one that can truly fill the voids in our heart. So. Uh, it's a very it's a very interesting place to do evangelism. Oftentimes you meet a lot of Americans say that they know God and they go to church, but there's there's like this lack of relationship with Jesus. And so it's really cool because we're able to introduce people to Jesus and tell them that it's a personal relationship with him. Um, so one of the ways that we like to share the gospel is through sharing our testimonies. Um, for me personally, I used to be a huge party animal back in the day. And so it's really cool because Jesus brought me out of that 
and I can now minister to those people who are also living in a party lifestyle um, and just encourage them that there is so much more that we have a hope in Christ. So yeah, we, we encounter a lot of tourists. We get to meet people from all over the world and it's really cool because they come from all sorts of different backgrounds. There's a lot of Catholics that we meet, a lot of new age people. Um, we've met witches and Wiccans on the street, like just all sorts. So it's really cool because we get to make a lot of friends and we get to share the gospel along the way. Um, so I just wanna share a quick story from a few weeks ago during the internship, we were out doing free prayer where we go onto Fremont Street, which is the old strip. And basically we just go off in partners and we just pray for people when we share the gospel. So we were holding our huge pre free prayer sign and this homeless guy is like, can you pray for my mom? And we said, yeah, like tell us about it. And we encouraged him that he can also pray if he believes in Jesus. And he was just so like downcast. Um, he had a bottle of alcohol in his hand and he's like, do you think that God could really forgive somebody like me? He's like, I'm 62 years old, is it too late? And we just encouraged him. I encouraged him that I used to drink and Jesus saved me out of that lifestyle because it was something that was so much better than alcohol that made me wanna leave that lifestyle. And he can do the same for this man. And so um, we actually just invited him, like we shared the gospel and we invited him to enter into a relationship with Jesus. And he said, yes. <laughs> so we prayed with him. He's like, you can take this alcohol. I don't even need it. So I literally, I picked it up and I went and I threw it away and we came back and he said, He's like, you know, so much heaviness just lifted off me. And he stood up and he was just saying that he felt like a new man. And he's like, I just want to dance. And so we're all like awkwardly dancing there on the street. Um, but it just felt like a Bible moment. It just felt like a moment where, you know, like the man in the Bible that was jumping and leaping and shouting praises of joy. Like that's what it felt like. And it was so cool to see God move in such a powerful way and and just meet people on the streets like that. Um, another one was Viva La Worship, which is where we go to the Strip in Las Vegas and we just worship right in the middle of where all the tourists walk past. And, you know, we get some bad responses, but we also encounter a lot of believers that come and just join in with us. But uh, me and my boyfriend, Josiah, we met this girl named Taylor. And as soon as we went up to her and we said, can we pray for you? She started crying. She said, she said, you know, I go to church, but only every now and then, and I smoke weed for my anxiety and it's really bad. And anyway, we were like, you know, have you ever heard the entire gospel? And she was like, not really. And so we shared the entire gospel with her from creation to Jesus' death and resurrection to today, what it looks like. And we just invited her again, like, do you want do you want this? Do you want to go deeper? Because there is a father that loves you. And she was just crying the whole time. And she said, yes. And so we got to lead her through that prayer, um, pray for the Holy Spirit to come and just fill her. And my boyfriend, he got a word of knowledge about her father. And he just said to her, look, I feel like God is saying that your father is going to be okay. And again, she starts crying. She's like, my father is actually a drug addict. And so we then got to pray for her dad and just pray that um, that he would have freedom. And so that was just a, such a beautiful moment. We, we both got to hug her and she just, she just had the biggest smile on her face. Um, so we have just seen God move in crazy ways. And I have personally been really reminded of just, just the character of God, that he would come down and meet us in the most unexpected ways, in the darkest places, because that's who he is. He's a good father and he's a loving friend. And so, yeah, there's a lot more that's happened, but I hope that could encourage you guys. And yeah. The first time I watched that second video we just saw from Mel, my spirit was stirred so much and I was had so much excitement and was overcome with so much love for Jesus. You know, Jesus just steps in. No matter who you are, no matter what the circumstances of your life are, no matter what you've done, you know, Jesus sees everybody and he steps in and meets people exactly where they need him. You know, and it's just such a beautiful and truly amazing thing to reflect on and, you know, see that he is at work in this very broken world. And it reminds me of the disciples and some of the miracles and adventures that the disciples had with Jesus. And even after Jesus went to heaven, you know, the disciples still continued to have these adventures. And we read a lot about these in, in the book of Acts. 
Um, I mean, the book of Acts chapter 3 opens with the account of uh, Peter and John healing a lame beggar who was sitting by the temple gates. And when this occurred, the crowd, of course, was so excited and so astonished at what happened. And they were asking them questions. And, you know, and in later chapters in Acts, we see that sometimes the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to the disciples because of the miracles and the signs and wonders that they had observed. But an interesting thing that I've noted right throughout the book of Acts is that whenever the crowd start almost trying to worship the disciples because of the miracles, because of the signs and wonders that they've seen, that the disciples always turn the crowd's attention back to Jesus. They always turn the crowd's attention to the name of Jesus and the power in that name and that they aren't doing these things in their own strength. They're doing them through the power of the name of Jesus. And a little while ago, a few weeks ago, I was actually reflecting on the power of Jesus, on the power of that name. And it's something that, you know, we may know about and we've heard about and we don't disagree with. But how often do we really believe it and really act upon it? And I think listening to Mel's video is a, a good wake up call that we need to start looking at the name of Jesus as the power that it really is that we need to start calling on that power, stepping out in faith, believing and believing that the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the things that the disciples saw, that Mel and her team see every day in Las Vegas, that those things can still happen here. They can happen here in Australia. And that, and that you know, the power of Jesus is available for all of us everywhere at any time. And you know what's actually also really cool? Uh, in um, John chapter 14, in verses 12 and 14, the Bible says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And the part of that passage that I really want to draw your attention to is when Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these. Even greater things than these. So we get so excited when we hear about miracles. We read about these miracles and things that happened with the disciples in the Bible. But Jesus is telling us that we can expect those things too. We can expect him to encounter people when we pray for them. We can expect him to pour out his love, to pour out his healing, his compassion, his restoration onto situations that we're praying for. We can believe that when we step out in faith, when we decide to take the chance and we decide that we're going to call on the power of his name and believe without a doubt that that power is for us. We can believe that we will do and see greater things. Jesus didn't go back to heaven and leave us high and dry. He is here with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. And if we call upon the power of his name, he is there. And it's, we can't do anything, anything at all in our own strength. And it is pointless even trying. <laughs> We need the power of Jesus. So what do you think it would look like for us as Spark Youth and as individuals if we started to expect and embrace miracles, expect and embrace the love and power of Jesus as something that is a part of normal life, not just something that's a rare event or something that you hear about, but something that was a normal part of our lives. And as I've said before, there is power, power in the name of Jesus. But do we really, really live in that power every day? And do we really, really understand the power that is available to us through this most precious of names? You know that Jesus said that when we ask him, for anything in his name and according to his will, he will do it. Anything that we ask in his name, 
and according to his will, he will do it. He may not do it as quickly as we would like and maybe he mightn't do it in the way we would like, but Jesus hears, he understands and he is close to the brokenhearted. He is close to those people in the streets of Las Vegas that Mel and her team minister to. And he is close to you and your family and your school and whatever situation you find yourself in or that you might be in right now. So as Spark Youth, let's firstly embrace Mel as our adopted missionary and be praying for her and supporting her. But secondly, and possibly more importantly, Let's start actively seeking the power of God, the power of the name of Jesus in our everyday lives and start expecting him to move in really magnificent ways. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that there is power in your name. We thank you from hearing the testimony from Mel that your power is still alive, it is still active, and you are still in the business of transforming and restoring lives. Father, I pray that as Spark Youth that we will have new boldness, new courage, new desire to see your spirit move, to see your power move in the lives of our friends, in our families, in our situations and in ourselves as well. Jesus, we just thank you so much for your reckless, extravagant love, the love that just never, ever gives up and is always available, that power that is always there when we call upon your name. And we thank you that you love each and every one of us so individually and so completely that you will never, ever give up on us. I just commit our wonderful young people into your hands, Lord, and our leaders as well. And we just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do through us as individuals and as a Spark Youth community to see your glory come and your kingdom be here on earth. And we just thank you, Jesus, and we love you so much. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.